السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته بسم الله الذي لا إله سواه والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا مولانا محمد الرسول الله على آله وأصحابه ومن والاه اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه اللهم افتح مسامع قلوبنا لذكرك اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم اجعلنا من الذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين Yes, says Allah Azza wa Jal, also emphasizing the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal within the context of akhlaq. Uh, um, says Allah Azza wa Jal, إِنَّ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ وَالْقَانِتِينَ وَالْقَانِتَاتِ وَالصَّادِقِينَ وَالصَّادِقَاتِ والصابرين والصابرات والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما. Allah describes in this wonderful ayah in Surah Al-Ahzab men and women of characteristics. And he begins with these characteristics in a certain sequence that ends, that closes, that summarizes everything with the fact that these men and women are in very frequent dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. That's how he closes. As the envelope, if you will, in which all other attributes are put. al muslimina wal muslimat You all know what it means. al mu'minina wal mu'minat wal qanitina those who stand in the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with reverence and focus and consistency. Qanit, like the person who is standing up in qunut, long qunut, in servitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wal qanitina wal qanita, those who are in their living, in their lives, in qunut to Allah azza wa jal, not only in qunut, in salah, in Salatul Layl, Wal Qanitin, Wal Qanitat. And then, Wal Sadiqin, Wal Sadiqat. Again, we spoke of Sidq, the character of Sidq. Sadiqin man and Sadiqin women. Wal Sadiqin, Wal Sadiqat. Wal Sabirin, Wal Sabirat. Sabr, and we spoke of the character of Sabr. Sabirin, Wal Sabirat. Wal Khashirin. والخاشعات man who are in خشوع and women who are in خشوع as Muslims, as Mu'mins who are in خشوع والخاشعين والخاشعات and والمتصدقين والمتصدقات encompasses everything we mentioned those who man who gives صدقة and women who gives صدقة والمتصدقين والمتصدقات and والصائمين والصائمات and men who fast and women who fast الصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات and men who guard their chastity sexually speaking والأحياء في الدين and women who do the same والحافظين فروجهم they guard that they don't allow anything illicit or improper to approach that domain. So there, it's, a, it's on their part to have. 
They are their guard that chastity. They guard that cleanliness, that purity. They guard that haya. والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات and it concludes with والذاكرين الله كثيرا and those believing men and women who are in very frequent dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal men and women who are in dhikr very frequent dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal أعد الله أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما Allah indeed has prepared for those ma'afirah. He will shield, he will protect, he will cover up their faults, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will not expose them. He will not expose us, inshallah ta'ala, on the day of judgment. And he will not allow the consequences of the bad deeds, of the sins, to be imposed upon us on the day of judgment. And on top of that, not only he forgives them and he covers their faults, subhanahu wa ta'ala, does not expose them, but he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, has prepared for them a great reward. And Allah, the great, calls the reward the great. And that suffices of uh, what um, one is to expect. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. This is about the zikr of Allah, so shall my dear brothers and sisters. Kathratu zikrillah. My dear sister, my dear brother, myself first. Don't think that because you have to do this, you have to work, you have to do this, you have to do that. I, I have, I, I, and you, again, we said, that's the trap of nafs. I don't have time for zikr. That statement is so ugly, is so treacherous, is so base, is so unintelligent, nay, it's so irresponsible to say that. I don't have time for liquor. And one would say that only if she or he lost all notion of awareness of Allah Azza wa Jal. How could I? That means we don't count at all. We, it means the person doesn't live that. That when you're working, when you're doing things, awareness of Allah Azza wa Jal in doing things the right way, the way He loves, must be there. Otherwise, I would be doing things the way He doesn't love. And that dhikr is integral to the life of a mu'min. How can I go to work without being in awareness of Allah Azza wa Jal? If I'm not, that means, yeah, yeah, I probably I might enter into doing things that are haram in my work, using my tongue in haram ways. How could I not? How could I say I don't have time for the of Allah? Please, please beware of that. Be cautious. I don't have time for Allah. Ila aina ya abdi. Ila khayrin minni. Again. Never say that. On the contrary, make yourself be in the Qur'an Allah Azza wa Jalla. Tadhakkar. Tadhakkar. Allah even uses this term to inform us about we need to make ourselves remember to be freed and liberated from the attempts of shaytan. In the ladina taqaw, idha massahum ta'ifum mina shaytani, he didn't say dhakarullah, tadhakaru, fa idha hum mubsirun. Subhanallah. In the ladina taqaw, those verily who have taqwa, idha massahum ta'ifum mina shaytani, if they are even touched tangentially, if you will, mess them ta'if, ta'ifun min ash shaytan, ta'if from tawaf, that is like, like, like a shaytani, shaytani ghostly uh, um, presence. Mess them ta'ifun min ash, didn't possess them, 
just touch them. You know, it was there to attempt to to take them, to influence them. So it's just still a mess, mess of ta'if. And ta'if is something like just passing by. Tadakkaru. The response of such people is tadakkaru. Tafalu. You know, it's, people translate it quickly and simply as, and they, they remember it. No, tadakkaru. What does it have in this? This, in this word, what is it telling me? Tadakkara tafa'ala Made themselves be in dhikr. Made themselves remember. They made themselves remember. They made themselves to be in dhikr. Tadakkara. Literally. And therefore it means also, oh, I remember it. Tadakkartu means also, yeah, I remembered. You know, I did not, I forgot, now I remembered. Tadakkartu. Tadakkartu. Through this struggle of being in dhikr of Allah. And once they are in remembrance, tadakkaru, فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْصِرُونَ Through that, they become illuminated and they are able to see. See. That tadakkur changed them to see the reality of things. And to, sh to see that this is, for example, a, a, you know, manipulation of shaitan. Whereas before tadakkur, one would simply look at it as maybe something normal, standard. فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْصِرُونَ أَنْ نَتَذَكَّرْ مَا يَدِيرْ Brothers and sisters, nothing, nothing should make me um, postpone dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, um, uh, to secondary um, position or priority. أُذْكُرُ الله. Well, what else? What am I created for? أُذْكُرِ اللَّهَ حَتَّى يُقَالَ مَجْنُونَ In one text it says, Be in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, it is until it is said he's a majnoon. Meaning, you know, some people who, whose heart has not yet, yani, tasted dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, you know, and they see somebody always in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, always in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, especially if that person constantly years like that and then they see in them sometimes if absorbed in a dhikr in their hell of enjoying dhikr of Allah Azza wa is prob probably not so aware of his or her environment in the negative sense uh, they look at them and they see them oh he's like a majnoon he doesn't belong here yes yes the dhikr is meant for me not to belong with my heart here Dhikr is meant for me to belong with my heart to Allah I don't see you. I don't see you with my heart. I see him with my heart. Yes, that's meant to be. That's, that's a goal. That's meant to be. I see with my eyes. I interact with you the way it should be. But my qalb does not see you. That's the way it should be. And that they call a majnoon. What a majnoon. And there are those who are in that ahwal because of their mahabba for Allah Azza Because of their connectedness to Allah Azza wa Because dhikr from their hearts alhamdulillah removed them from the chains and the yokes of the material world. And of course, many of you must have, my dear sisters and brothers, experienced that if you have a problem, sometimes a serious problem, emotional, and you enter into dhikr of Allah Azza wa and this is what we're doing here, is dhikr of Allah Azza wa as well, is a form of dhikr of Allah Azza wa If our qulub and minds are involved, in those, and you enter into dhikr of Allah Azza wa and you continue to do that, and you continue to do that, and then 
slowly, sometimes quickly, you forget all of that. And then you are released. And then that thing here is gone. Dhikr liberated us. Because we turned our attention towards him as so through repetition. We turned our attention towards him as Zawajan, and he is the source of life and the source of security and serenity and peace, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and salam in our qulub. I must, we must have a regular, a regular word of dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. We must. In addition to what we know of obligatory awrad, of what we have so far learned of salah and of zakah and of siyam, etc., the word of that which is called dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, and when we say dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal without qualifier to imply it as salah or, or zakah or sadaqah or siyam or dua or ilm with seeking ilm while your heart is there for amal. These are all forms of dhikr of, dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. But when we don't put a qualifier next to that and we say dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, and that's usually what they mean, the nafila um, dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, of tahleel and tasbih and tahmeed and hawqala and salah ala nabi wa hakadha. And the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal through what Rasulullah sallallahu taught us of adhkar, daily adhkar, in the morning, and in between, and in the evening, and at bedtime, and at wudu, and under all circumstances, the circumstantial dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, depending on the circumstances, when it rains, when there, we see the sun, when we see clouds, when we see thunder, when we enter the bathroom, when we leave the bathroom, when we are at home, All of us, a genuine seeker, must have of that a portion which becomes his or her daily, regular word. And that's they call word of the Kurvala Sahaja. And word is a very beautiful word for that. Because it's from Warada, Yeridu, Urudan, Wirdan. And the word, is when I go to uh, something, when I go to some place, I'm sorry, warada, when I go to reach some place, and it is used also to mean to reach a well of water. A well of water. When I want to reach a well of water, that's the, the, the word preferably to be used. Waradtu al ma'a. Waradtu bi'ar al ma'i. You know, I reached, I went to the well of water. So we say, Waradtu. Waradtu al ma'a. Allah says in the Quran describing Sayyidina Musa alayhi wa ala, ala Rasulina wa alayhi as salatu as salam. In Surah uh, Al-Qasas, when he fled the Pharaoh, when he was arriving to Midian, Allah describes him, alayhi salatu, wa ala rasulina salatu wa salam. وَلَمَّا وَرَدَ مَاءَ مَدْيَنَ وَرَدَ مَاءَ مَدْيَنَ And when he reached Warad, and the word is Warad, the well of water of the tribe of Midian. ولما ورد ماء مدينة وجد عليه أمة من الناس يسقون. He found a group of people, in that case, circumstantial conditioned shepherds, drawing water for their flocks. So, is to go for water. My word, my word, I need to drink water. 
I need to drink water. That's my word. The water of my spiritual life. That's my word. My word. And then when I drink and I finish, when I drink and I finish, what do I do? A sadar. A sadar. When he inquired about those two women, Allah Rasulina Salatu Salam Sayyiduna Musa, um, may I help you? What what are you doing here, two women in the midst of these men? She said, in other words, we're here in other words by necessity, because we have no brothers and we have one father, and a father is very old. He cannot do that by himself. And we need water. So and we cannot mix with man. Look at that hair. They can wait as long as it takes to pitch water until حَتَّى يُصْدِرَ الْرِعَانِ يُصْدِرَ الْرِعَانِ That is, until the shepherds have drawn water and took water and left. This is يُصْدِرَ As-sadr. Sadr. Sadr is a chest. As-sadr. This is with Fatha. Sadr, not as-sadr. Hatta yusdir al-ri'an. Subhanallah. After you have attained your word, yani tasdur. Not before that. When we are in hajj, and we go to the house of Allah Azza wa Jal, There is a tawaf that is called what? Tawaf al-sadr. It is also called tawaf al-ifada. You went for your word, you drank, you drank, you drank in that, in that tawaf, in that hajj, I'm sorry. You drank, you drank, and then you have the final encounter in the arkan of hajj. The ultimate rukn is tawaf al-sadr or tawaf al-ifada. Like you drank, you drank, you rewarded, now you can leave with this ifada. It is called also al-ifada, with this flow of faid of Allah's rahmah, of Allah's barakat, of Allah's gifts upon you. Ifada. And that's why it is ifada. You feel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alayka wa ala qalbika insha'Allah ta'ala wa ala hayatika min subhanahu wa ta'ala ataihi wa khayratihi wa anwarihi subhanahu wa ta'ala before you leave fa sadarta wa anta mufadun alayka so as sadar al wird and as sadar the value of wird the value of wird life sustaining my drink to sustain my life and then to go to the daily life after that and in between and after that while equipped with life-giving water the dhikr of Allah I must have a weird regular weird Rasulullah sallallahu was always in the of Allah Azza wa Jal. The Sahaba Ridwan Allah Ta'ala and Ma'ardahum, a fact, they were all, had their own ahzab as they call them an awrad, the hizb. My hizb or my wird sometimes, they call it also my hizb. Always. Rasulullah wa Mawlana sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam كان يذكر الله على كل أحواله. He was in dhikr of Allah عز وجل under all circumstances. 
with all forms of dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. All the time. And it is, of course, through his most noble teachings that we received all these meanings that we are sharing. And the specific adhkars for all circumstances that the ulama have communicated, alhamdulillah, to us, and they have practiced for us to practice. Hatta annahu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said, as you know, in emphasizing this continuity of dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, tanamu inaya wa la yanamu qalbi. My eyes go to sleep, my heart never does. The heart of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is always in the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, even when he sleeps. His hal his maqam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his qalb is always in awareness of Allah Azza wa Jal, is always in the hadra, the spiritual presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is always aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why his dreams, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his dreams are wahi. His dreams are wahi and inspirations from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His dreams are consistent with his personality, with his ruh. So that's why his dreams, the anbiya dreams are wahi. Not anyone else's. Even the wali's dreams are not wahi. They could be karamat and so on. And that tells us sometimes, perhaps, my dear sisters and brothers, with some extension of meaning, that uh, the way we dream tells us a lot about the way we are. May Allah forgive us. If you want to know who you are, what you are inside, well, remember your dreams. What did you dream about in the past 20 years and 50 years? What were the quality of your dreams? Those dreams tell me a lot about what I am. If I turn to Allah Azza wa Jal in repentance and forgiveness and ask Allah Azza wa Jal to rectify and to purge this stain in me or to ignore it like an atheist and be pleased with what one is and does not attempt to change. I sometimes feel that if there is no teacher, I find no teacher to help me. I find no sincere, devoted friend to help me discover what I am, my dreams will. You have them. They will tell you what akhlaq we have, whether negative or positive. And that's why Rasulullah Mawlana وسلم, when he sleeps, his sleep is the of Allah Azza His dreams are consistent with his haqiqah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal is so essential, my dear sisters and brothers, in our homes and in our lives. And I remind myself and you again with that beautiful, powerful text, uh, very simple to memorize, which says to us that Mathal al-bayt al-lazhi yudhkaru fihi Allah wal-bayt al-lazhi la yudhkaru fihi Allah مثل الحي والميت. The example of a house, of a home, in which there is a dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, and a home in which there is no dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, is the example of the living and the dead. 
النسبة بين بيت يذكر فيه الله وبيت لا يذكر فيه الله نسبة الحي إلى الميت. That is the, the, the worth, the value of a home in which there is ذكر الله عز وجل and a home in which there is no ذكر الله عز وجل. The نسبة the relationship is a relationship between like the living and the dead. أذكروا الله وفي بيوتكم. Be in the of Allah Azza wa Jal and in our homes. And in our homes. Sallu fi buyutikum. Be in salah in your homes. Salatu nawafil, salatu sunan at least. And sometimes together with your families. Salatu fara'il, together just to make sure there is a, there is a, there is a practice there going on. Sometimes. وَذُكُرُوا اللَّهِ تَسْبِيحًا وَتَهْلِيلًا وَتِلَاوَةً لِلْقُرْآنِ Together with your children in your homes. Read the Qur'an in your homes. Read the adhkar together sometimes with your children before you go to bed and when they wake up in the morning and sometimes in between. Teach each other to enter the bathroom or the restroom in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal and to live in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal to stand in front of a mirror in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal wa hakadha wa qulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim li wa lakum wa sallallahu wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina mulana muhammadin wa ala alihi al-tahirin wa ashabihi al-mayameen wa tabi'ina lahum bi ihsanin ila yom al-deen wa salamu alaykum ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته صلّى الله عليه وسلم أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك.